Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Caitlin Dabro, and today we are making another super cookery recipe. This one is a dessert, an apple dessert. It's actually called a pudding pie, but it has no pudding in it but it is a pie. <laughs> like the last one, we're making the original recipe and then making our own version. Yeah, anyways, I'm gonna stop talking and get right into the video. Okay, so first, for the original recipe, it calls for a cookie crust, but the cookie part of the crust is something called swieback or swieback, I don't know, something like that. I asked my mom what it was and she said that it is something that I think is no longer being sold out in the world, but also it's like a teething cookie, kind of sweet, kind of bready, very light type of situation. So, since I couldn't get those Svibuck cookie thingies, I was thinking maybe a biscotti? Maybe that will work? It did not work. <laughs> Turns out biscottis have this anise licorice flavor in them, at least the ones that I got did. Did not know that. It turned out really gross. So, that was my bad. But anyways, <laughs> since I completely messed up that crust, the second try, we actually used a butter cookie base. That one turned out much better. So, that one calls for seven ounces of butter cookies. one tablespoon of granulated sugar, a heaping fourth a teaspoon of cinnamon, and a heaping eighth a teaspoon of nutmeg, and one stick of unsalted melted butter. And that just gets all mixed up and pressed into our pie tin. And the original super cookery recipe doesn't have you cook that crust. It's a straight up cold pie, but we just wanted to get a little bit of browning on our crust. So we just let that cook in the oven for five to six minutes at 350 degrees. And then once that had a little bit of browning, like around the edges at the top, we took that out, let it cool, and then put that in the fridge for it to completely cool. Now for the whipped cream, that part is super simple and always delicious. So for that, we just had to put our large bowl and our beaters from our electric mixer into the fridge or freezer, whatever one it fits into, and we just want that to get nice and cold. Once those were all cold and ready, we're adding in two cups of heavy whipping cream, two heaping, lightly heaping tablespoons of granulated sugar, and one and a half teaspoons of vanilla extract. And then that's just getting all mixed together, whisked up until it's fluffy and holds its shape. Stiff peaks. And once that delicious whipped cream is all done. We're just going to put that in some Tupperware and put that in the fridge while we get started on the filling. Okay, so this is the part where we really changed it. <laughs> the original filling is an apple puree. That's literally just some steamed apples in either apple juice or water. And once they start to get a little soft, you put that in the blender and just blend that up. It's straight up applesauce on a cookie crust with some whipped cream. It's not right. <laughs> that texture does not belong, or at least did not work for me, on a pie crust with some whipped cream. And I usually don't care about textures. I'm not a big texture person. I don't really care but this, it was odd. So for the remake of it, I just wanted to do some regular apple pie filling. So that calls for four Honeycrisp apples and two Granny Smith apples, peeled, cored, and thinly sliced up. Now once you have your mountain of sliced apples, we're taking a very large pot and we're melting down two tablespoons of unsalted butter. And once that butter was ready, we tossed in all the apples along with a little less than a half a cup of light brown sugar, a little less than a fourth a cup of granulated sugar, one teaspoon of cinnamon, an eighth a teaspoon of ground nutmeg, an eighth a teaspoon of ground allspice, a fourth a teaspoon salt, and the zest and juice of one lemon. And yeah, then that's cooking uncovered for 20 minutes on medium high heat, more towards medium. And once that's reduced down and a lot of liquids had come out, we're gonna thicken up that juice with one tablespoon of cornstarch. And again, we're gonna cook that for another five minutes. So in total, that apple pie filling cooked for 25 minutes. Mm -hmm. 
And once they were done, we're gonna set those off to the side for about 10 minutes just to let those cool a little bit before we assemble that pie. And pretty much just to assemble that pie, all we have to do is put the apples in the crust. <laughs> we most likely would have topped off the pie with all the fresh whipped cream, but our apples were still really hot and we didn't want that cream to just straight up melt. So we just added a very large dollop of whipped cream on each of our individual pieces of pie. And yeah, it's done. Is this version better than the original version? I think so. Is that cookie crust really necessary? Not really, might as well just make that pastry pie dough. The cookie crust doesn't enhance it in any way. It's not like, oh my God, why isn't everyone eating apple pie with cookie crust? It's good, but it's not great. The only reason why I can see you would make the cookie crust instead of the pie crust is because pie crust takes a long time. It's not exactly the easiest to make, I'm pretty sure. So I get the cookie crust if you don't want to take the time for the pastry crust. But yeah, it was good. It wasn't anything special, but it was good. I hope you guys enjoyed this recipe. If you do try it, let me know what you think. The next video, I'm not sure what it's gonna be. So we'll both be surprised about that. It's will It will be a super cookery recipe again. But yeah, that's about it. Not too much else to say about it. Again, I hope you guys enjoyed this recipe and I'll see you guys very soon. I love you guys so much. Bye!